Hello, everybody. It's Vinyl Rich here. Well, Vinyl Finds 95. Can't believe I'm at that number. But here we are. Um, before we get started, we're going to start with Rich's Little Helper. This is Grandma's handbag, would say. Pop open a Grosh. Haven't had a beer in a number of days, but I'll have a few today. As soon as I'm done here, I'll go watch the Dodgers. Hope the game is as good as the last two. This, I got 10 records I'm gonna show, which is more than I normally like to show. Cause sometimes I, well, I have a lot of pauses. I talk slow and sometimes I talk too much. So I like to limit it to seven or so, but I traded in some albums at Amoeba last week and I got two used and eight brand new records in exchange. Um, I got rid of records that I did not like. I got rid of some good ones, but I I just don't think I'll be listening to them. So I figured, you know what? Well, this is, this is what really happened. I traded in 33 albums and they weren't, they were albums that really aren't that good. And I, I got $50 credit, and I think I got three albums for that. Then I was watching a video, High Rant District's last video, and he was talking how he hasn't been buying records lately. He's been trading stuff in that he doesn't listen to anymore. I guess he's been trading in his reissues. He has a real issue with reissues. And he said, you know, he really wants to hone down his... Collection. I mean, I, I kind of want to do that, but to a certain degree. I, I used to be of the, I wanted to have something of everything. So if somebody came over to my house, I would have something that they would. I'm past that now, you know. But anyways, after watching his, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna dig deeper, and I got rid of 33 again, and I got 150 for that, for that one. And I got seven records. But anyways, two are used. Eight of them are brand new. And they're all excellent. I'm going to start off with one that, I mean, it's a record I've, I've seen, I've known. Um, Flipside CT showed it. And the way he talked about it, it, it kind of piqued my interest. And it's I Am The Blues by Willie Dixon. Um... He said it's, I think he even left me a message in the comment section about this. I should check this one out. And I must say he is absolutely right. This is fantastic. I always kind of avoided this album because I had heard his vocals are not the strongest. His vocals are fine on this. And it's the band is fantastic. And they're all Willie Dixon songs that are, that are well known formed by other people, Backdoor Man, The Seventh Son, Spoonful, I Ain't Superstitious, I'm Your Hoochie Coochie Man, The Little Red Rooster, The Same Thing. You get the idea. Fantastic album. Glad I got this. And it's on the 70s Columbia label. Very cool. And the other used one I got is Wharf Rat Tales. Um, I remember when this came out. It's a comp of, uh, I guess you could loosely call it the Garage Revival, the Paisley Underground scene in LA. And uh, I never did get it. I, I do have a couple, of, I did get a couple of other albums of this type back then, but I never did get this one. And I saw this and I thought, you know what? I'm not paying any cash out of my pocket, and it was was not very expensive. It's got the Rain Parade, great couple of songs, the Leaving Trains, the Question. I have a seven inch by the Question. I'm not sure if these are the two songs on there or not. The Last, and the other three bands, bands here I'm not real familiar with, except the Hundred Flowers. I know that band. They were originally. Uh, punk band and 
77, 78, the urinals, they changed their name to 100 Flowers. And it's kind of interesting that they're included in this, but their two songs fit in perfectly and it it does give it a, you know, it, it, it isn't the same thing over and over. It, this is a great comp, just put it that way. And it comes with this insert. And that's what the labels look like. Same thing on both sides, but different color. I hope you can see that. Now on to the new records. I'm real happy with all these. I, I can't believe it. I got all these for, you know, stuff I didn't really want. First one I'm gonna show is Mud Honey. Um, recorded at Third Man Records. This the, was the cheapest of the new ones. It's it's only twelve ninety eight, brand new. It's a simple comes in a simple sleeve. Really nice uh, inner sleeve. Third Man Records label. This is fantastic. I had heard this before online. When I'm at work, um, I usually, a lot of times I only get one break. And uh, it's, a, it's a good break, though. And uh, I'll, I'll listen to music and sit and relax in a nice, comfortable chair. And I have listened to this one a few times. Fantastic live recording by Mud Honey, um, which is a band. I have a few of their albums. Um, I've been listening to my Sub Pop. Seven inches, and I'm I'm gonna do a seven inch sub pop video, and I want to listen to them all before I show them, so I, because I don't remember a lot of them, and that made me kind of realize I need to do a mud honey video also. When I make those kind of videos, I try to listen to the music. That's like the Gimme Ten I did, in 1980. I did listen to all the albums. I mean, if I didn't, Scary Monsters by Bowie would have been included in my top 10 just by, you know, reputation and memory. But upon listening to that just a month ago or whatever it was, I didn't really... This, it sounds great, but I don't think the songs are all that great with the exception of the last three songs on side one, quite honestly. And it didn't make my top 10. But anyways, I am currently listening to 1981 albums. And I'll make my Gimme 10 1981 in a couple weeks. The next brand new one I got was Cox Bar. This is a reissue. Shock Troops. This album originally came out in 1982. This band formed in the mid-70s, I believe. Could have been even earlier than that. They had a an album, I think it came out in 77, just entitled Spot Car, Cock Spar. <laughs> and uh, it, it was only released in France only for some odd reason. It did not do well. But when uh, Gary Bushnell released some of those Oi compilations in the 80s, early 80s, he included some of the Cock Spar songs on them. And it peaked interest, and they got, they recorded this. I don't know if they had broken up at that time. They got back together. But, yeah, really good. 82 punk rock. Pirates. It's not real thrashy punk rock. Not real. They're, it's like, uh, bar rock. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Anyways. It's got an embossed inner sleeve, I forgot. And it is on this really nice, man, it's, it, it is a tight, it's like a blood red. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, it's a good album. Um, I avoided them back in the day for some reason. Now, before I show this next one, see, I do talk too much, don't I? Um, there's been a lot of people showing and talking about the new Paul McCartney singles. 
Foo you. Oh. Now I have not heard it, but I have heard a little smidget of it on uh, one of the videos. God dang, what's that dude's name? He lives in Riverside. Anyways, he told his little... What's her name? Amanda, whatever that Amazon thing is that you talk to it and it does whatever. It's actually spying on you. And it played a clip of that song. And it to me, it didn't sound like a bad song. It sounded like every other Paul McCartney song, darn near, you know, that I've heard in the last 20 years. And it to me, it's... it's all these videos and all this attention about this stupid song by Paul McCartney just kind of shows the state that the record industry is in right now. I mean, people are paying all this attention to this song that sounds like something that could have came out, quite frankly, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And that leads up to this album here. It's Joy. It's Ty Siegel with White Fence. This is Ty Siegel with his dog Fanny. I don't know if you can see. And this is this dude here is called White Fence. And this is their second album together. It's called Joy. Now why all that Paul McCartney spill before you show that? Because this album, it came out this year, 2018. It is a beautiful album. I've only show, seen one person show it. That's vinyl in the van. And this is a beautiful record. And people that are, it's not as fuzzed out as his, most of his other stuff. It's, but it, it sounds fantastic. And people that like that, that are Beatles fans, if they would give this a listen, I, I think most of them would actually really like this album. And it, it's a darn shame, you know, that people are going Google Gaga over a, but almost 80 year old guys, new single, and shit like this is just completely ignored. And to me, that's what's wrong. That's the state of the music industry right now, you know? Comes with this insert, has this picture, joy. And the lyrics, very concise lyrics. As usual with Ty Siegel. The labels are very plain, almost like a bootlegish. All it has is the names of the songs. And that's it. Very cool. Now, I of all these albums, I don't own any of them, with the exception of this next one I'm gonna show. I do own it on C D. But I figured I'm not spending my own money and I might as well Get it? This is my favorite Ty Siegel album, Manipulator. Came out in 2014, I believe. Yeah, 2014. I have it on CD. Really cool gatefold. I don't know if you're going to see that at all. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> This has always been my favorite Ty Siegel album. Um, when he he was talking about this, he said what he wants to do with his records, he wants to, you know, he wants it to be like Sgt. Pepper's and Black Flag's Damage all mixed into one. And this album kind of, it's a pretty good description of this album. It's very varied. Um... Just really excellent songs on this. And I highly recommend this album. Ty Siegel. It's a double album. The labels are basically the same, so I'm not going to show that. It's pretty... I don't know if you can see these labels in the slide, but whatever. The next one I'm going to show is another Ty Siegel. This is Mugger by Ty Siegel. This one came out in 2016. And... Uh, I had never heard this album. This one sounds uh, pretty typical Ty Siegel. Really fuzzed out. Um, 
it's a good album. It's not as good as Manipulator, but I want wanted to increase my Ty Siegel, so I did pick it up, and I'm it's I really dig it. It uh. I don't know if you can see that, but that's pretty trippy. Can't make that out, dude. And uh, this is the inner sleeve. And this album. What was I going to say? Okay, it's a very similar label as the last one. Just on white, though. Emotional Mugger. Very cool addition to my Ty Siegel collection. He did make another album. That was 2016. He did come out with a, a self-titled album in 2017. I did not pick that one up. But upon listening to these, I definitely will. It's, uh... He recorded it with, uh... Four other guys, or five other guys. And they ended up becoming the Freedom Band. And this is who plays on this one. This is Ty Siegel. Freedom Band or Freedom Goblin. And uh, that one that was recorded in 2016 was re was uh, produced by Steve Albini. Steve Albini probably, or he uh, produces probably half of these songs. And just like that Ty Siegel White Fence one that came out in 2018, this one came out in 2018. And this is spectacular. Anybody that likes the Beatles, I in fact, this would be a good starting point with anybody out there that is not into has not heard Ty Siegel, pick up this one. It's another double album. I mean, they're double albums, but they they only I think they cost like twenty four dollars. So I mean, it's not bad and fantastic. The I saw Barack P Dub show this one earlier in the year, and he said, "Man, this is the only album I've heard by." Ty Siegel that doesn't sound like crap. And <laughs> I, I understand what he's saying. This does have a really good sound to it. Whereas a lot of Ty Siegel's other albums are really fuzz and garagey sounding. This one has some of that, but it also has some really good production. And there's Fanny, the dog. He even... The first song on here is called Fanny Dog. That's how I know. That's Fanny. But yeah, very cool. Pretty cool album cover. And it comes with this poster. Freedom Band. That I'm going to hang in my bedroom. Right next to my Morrissey posters. And the inner sleeves. Band Slave. And a happy face. I'm only going to show one label because they are both the same. The print is the same as on those other ones, but instead of a plain color, it's got the rainbow. And the other inner sleeve has a picture of water, I guess. It's hard to tell. And then a picture of Ty Siegel with tramp spelled backwards and upside down. Two more to go. We're almost done. This next one here, I almost didn't get it, but I said, you know what? If I leave this behind, it's not going to be there when I go back. They only had, I think, two. And I'll kick myself. It's the cramps. It's the, well, right here it says, real men's guts versus the smell of female. And what this is, is uh, this volume two. What this is, is the complete concert of the second night at the Peppermint Lounge. Um, for they, they recorded, they played two nights at the Peppermint Lounge. And they took tracks from that and they released Smell of Female. Their album came out in, I don't know, whenever, 80, whatever, two or one. And this is the second night. The complete set. Very cool. I wouldn't mind having volume one either, man, you know. And it's on some dodgy label, Connoisseur Recording Service. 
and it says it's limited to 250. That's why I decided, you know what, I'm going to get this. 250 copies only. No represses. Yeah, okay, whatever. The last one, I, I wasn't sure what this was going to sound like. But I, you know what, I'm going to check it out. It's Harley's Crow Mags Flanagan. Harley Flanagan from the Crow Mags. Original member of the Crow Mags. Um, this is a 1982 demo recording where apparently Harley plays all the instruments. It's before the band. Actually, I guess there was a band. They played a few shows. They broke up. And he didn't really care for the sound. So he, he recorded this demo that was supposedly going to be released but never got released. And too bad because this would have went down as a classic back in the day. This is fantastic. Unbelievable. And like I said, uh, Harley records all the all the songs on this. Now, there's a lot of history with the Crow Mags that I'm not aware of. Pretty, pretty cool shot of the band. I think they started gigging in like an 84 or something. The band that kind of evolved into Crow Mags. Um, I know... Or Harley and I, I don't know if it's the current singer, they hate each other. I, I don't know. There's some bad blood there. But uh, yeah, it's on. It's only two songs on each side. And this one was 1898. So it is, this one was not cheap. This is more expensive than that uh, Mud Honey album, you know, full album that recorded live at Third Man Records. But I, I wanted to hear this. And. I'm glad I did. Pretty cool shot back there. Yeah. Anybody that's into the Crow Mags and they haven't heard this, check it out. I, I was impressed. And like I said, maybe this is where I read the little bit of history about these demos. Yeah. Because I don't know shit about the Crow Mags. But yeah. I, I what well, actually I wanted to get a repress of their album, their first album. They did not have that, but they had this. I thought oh, I'll check that out. Anyways, follow me, Droogs. Take care. Go watch the Dodgers. Hopefully the this game's as good as the last two.